Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, today, I am doing a pick a card reading for Mercury Retrograde. And I set the intention um, so that this could be a timeless reading for anybody who happens to stumble upon this video either shortly before during a Mercury Retrograde, excuse me, shortly before a Mercury Retrograde, during a Mercury Retrograde, or shortly after a Mercury Retrograde. So um, take this reading as it resonates. Don't force anything to fit. Um, also, do not um, engage or communicate with anybody who reaches out to you claiming to want to give you a reading or do any kind of work for you like that. Um, real psychics will never reach out to you. You have to reach out to them. So do not allow yourself to be scammed. So I just wanted to share that. All right. <clears throat> okay, so today I'm going to be doing a pick a card reading um, using this Mercury Retrograde spread that I got from Moon Mama Oracle. And so we're going to be asking today a card to represent your energy now. What will be the major theme of Mercury Retrograde this time whenever you're watching the reading? What is the major thing to be cautious of this time? Where should you keep going forward despite the retrograde? Advice from your guides for survival and a card to represent you at the end of the retrograde. So <clears throat> pile one is uh, bronzite. This card says, I send out loving, thoughtful energy, and I receive the same in return. Um, it represents protective, grounding, harmony, courage, and all of the chakras, all from the root chakra, the solar plexus uh, chakra, uh, excuse me, the sacral chakra, the solar plexus chakra, the heart chakra, the throat chakra, the third eye chakra, and the crown chakra. So all of those are represented. It's also the zodiac sign of Leo. Okay. Number one may also be significant. <laughs> so that's cool. Pile one. Okay. Pile two got sodalite. It says, I am guided by logic and intuition. It represents intuition, focuses energy, guidance, and the chakras are the throat and the third eye. And it is the zodiac sign of Sagittarius. It represents that in um, some way. So that may be significant to you somehow may help you select uh, which card or pile you're going to pick. Pile three, um, you got hematite. And this card says, I detoxify and transmute stress into balance and harmony. So number nine. Um, <clears throat> it's Aquarius and Aries energy. Grounding, balancing, detoxifying. It absorbs negative energy also represent represents willpower and the root chakra so take a moment to select your pile and check the description for the timestamp associated with the pile that you selected okay if you selected pile one this is your reading I've... All right, pile one, please. Mercury retrograde for pile one. Okay, a card to represent pile one's energy right now. You got the nine of wands. Also, the five of wands came out, so... You may have had some struggles and some arguments recently, um, competition, um, either with a partner or in the work environment, or with you may have felt a lot of com competition with creative projects as well. Um, <clears throat> but you have been able to stand up on your own, stand on your own two feet, take care of your family, maintain independence. Um, okay, <clears throat> and we'll go into these in more detail as they, as I, um, pull the clarifier cards. Okay, 
Um, what will the major theme of Mercury Retrograde be for Pile 1 this time that they are watching this reading? What is the major theme of Mercury Retrograde this time that Pile 1 is watching this reading? Pile 1s. Ace of Wands. New creative spark and new spiritual spark. Okay. <clears throat> what is the major thing to be cautious of this time during this Mercury retrograde for pile one? For their highest and greatest good, please. Two of Cups. Partnerships. Either romantic or creative partnerships. Okay. Where should pile one keep going forward despite the retrograde? So sometimes... You know, during Mercury retrograde, we're told, you know, kind of hang back, don't make any major decisions, don't sign any contracts, or if you have to, just really, really go over the fine print and make sure everything, all the P's and Q's are in order and all that stuff. Um, okay. So, however, sometimes we do need to move forward. So where should Pile 1 continue to move forward? The world card, closing out cycles, closing out major cycles, entering new stages of life. Okay. Tying up loose ends also is what I'm, what I'm getting. Okay. <clears throat> advice for, excuse me, advice from pile one's guides for survival. Whoa. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if that was caught on camera. Ten of Pentacles. Focus on the long term. Focus on long term stability and financial goals. Okay. A card to represent Pile 1 at the end of this Mercury retrograde that they are watching this video, whenever it is that they're watching this video. Pile 1. Hard to represent pile one at the end of this retrograde. So the sun came out, came out in, in the reverse. It did flip, you know, and it fell on top of uh, the major theme and the major thing to be cautious, cautious of this time. So the sun in reverse, it can represent unhappiness or depression but it can also represent coming out of a stage of being depressed or unhappy the bottom of the deck is the page of air which is also the page of swords in the traditional tarot and that is kind of you know the sword suit is mercury retrograde energy um learning learning okay all right, clarifier cards, please, for pile one. Please clarify the nine of fire and the five of fire for pile one. Resistance. Okay. You've been experiencing a lot of resistant, and you yourself may have also been resistant to... What I'm getting is resistant to seeing yourself a certain way. Um, or like allowing yourself, like worrying, resistant of allowing yourself to be seen a certain way. Okay, I'll, get, I'll clarify that more. All right, so let's see here. Please clarify number two, the Ace of Fire for pile one. Well, patience, patience, here, let me just do this, okay, <clears throat> please clarify number, number three, two of cups for pile one, the two of water for pile one, please clarify what that represents, will, willpower, 
your will, someone else's will. All right, please clarify number four, the world for pile one. What does the world represent for pile one? Clearing, cleaning and clearing. You could be cleaning out like a lot of old stuff, trash, um, things that may have gotten trashed. Uh, like if you had something in storage, I'm seeing for some of you, even though I haven't gotten the clarifier on this yet, <laughs> as far as like where you should keep going forward, despite it being a retrograde, I'm seeing for somebody that maybe there was a storage unit or something and there was some water damage, some, some sort of like breach of, you know, the weather where the weather could get in like through the wall or through the roof or something like that, or through a window possibly that broke a broken window and some stuff got ruined and it's like you've been procrastinating on going in there and clearing some stuff out and getting rid of things that have been damaged. Tying up loose ends, cleaning and clearing, that is all definitely recommended. Okay, clarify the world, please. Clarify the world, though, for pile one. Okay. Attraction and beginnings. Oh, lovely. I love that. Okay. Now is also a time to plan, to plan on the things that you would like to attract into your life what new beginnings now it looks like you've closed down a major cycle and some new beginnings are going to be happening very soon for you and now it's time to plan for those beginnings please clarify number five the ten of earth for pile one please <sighs> the cars just fly out okay we have extremes here Ten of Pentacles, advice from my guides for survival. So <clears throat> what I'm getting with this extremes, one, one thing I'm seeing for some of you, there may be some sort of an extreme business investment idea or opportunity. Now's not the time to do that. Anything that seems like cutting edge, um, and of course I'm gonna I'm gonna go through all these again. But yeah, anything that seems like cutting edge, um, don't do that right now <laughs> because it's a trend, is what I'm getting. It's a trend. It's not really gonna pan out um, the way you think it is or the way that people are pro portraying it to be. So it's not really a good time to get involved in anything like that, is what they're saying. Okay. Please clarify number six, the sun in reverse for pile one. Growth. Okay. Bottom of the deck, you got power. Somebody's personal power. Page of air can also represent somebody in your life, a student. In your life, somebody that you are teaching, it could be one of your children that you are teaching, they're learning about something, um, of course, like going into some sort of field of study already. They're a young person. This is a young person, maybe even a high school student or maybe even younger, um, but could also be like in, in their 20s as well. And so... Um, and with this power card showing up, it's like you teaching them how to be in some particular way. Um, but then through that teaching process, you all, you're also learning more about yourself and more about your own personal power and your own willpower. For some people, so that may be a very specific message, people, um, anyone who's dealing with a young person in their life, like one of your children who's going into a, almost like a specialized field of study, I'm getting. Um, it could be some kind of, even like a special class that they're taking. 
Um, for some kids, it's advanced. I'm, I'm calling them kids, but they could even be like, you know, like I said, in their 20s. Um, for some of them, it's advanced. For others, it's um, in order to correct like a speech impediment or um, something along those lines. Okay, so that's for somebody. And then um, another person, another group of you, and of course, several um, messages could resonate. Like people often have several things going on in their lives at one time. So um, your personal power, though, is very significant at this time. This is a really good time to realize and to evaluate yourself um, and what helps you stand in your own power and in your own truth. And like, because this long-term Ten of Pentacles came out, you know, having stability, having financial stability, having a long-term, you know, nest egg for the future can make people feel very powerful. Like some, for some people, wealth equals power. Um, and so it's all about evaluating and realizing what's going to put you in that energy and what's going to make you feel that way. Um, okay. Now <laughs> that we pulled all the cards, I just want to recap card to represent your energy. Now, like I said, you have been experiencing some kind of resistance here with the Nine of Wands, the Five of Wands, and the Resistance card coming out. This makes me think of the phrase grasping at straws as well. Grasping at straws. Um, that is a saying that I've heard people use whenever people are just like looking for Okay, it's like when people know they're wrong, <laughs> I'm sorry to be laughing. It's just like, it just reminds me, I know this type of person. When people are wrong and they're just grasping at straws, like basically trying to find reasons to justify why they're right, even though they, they know they're not right. Um, so you could be dealing with some of that energy. That could also be coming from yourself where you know, you may be grasping at straws, even though you know you're in the wrong in some way. And you're looking for all these reasons um, to justify why you did what you did. And um, it's called cognitive dissonance <laughs> is what I'm getting. It's like the things you tell yourself so that you can feel comfortable with the way you handle the situation. And again, this could be you that where you're having to deal with that now during this Mercury retrograde, you're, you're faced with something where it's kind of reminding you or making you think about that, or somebody in your life is being that way with you. Um, and of course it could even be both because sometimes, you know, we, like I said, we have different things happening in our lives. You could be like doing this in one area of your life and then someone else is doing it to you in another area of your life. And so it's like that divine mirror. So, um, okay, that's what I'm getting. And then with the nine of wands here, your appearance and how you look to others has been very important to you. Other people's impressions of you has been very important to you. Other people's opinions of you has been very important to you in the past. And um, that's something that you've struggled with within yourself. However, regardless of whatever these people think about you, whatever opinion they have of you, you have managed to take care. Look at this woman who's holding her little baby. She's got all this gold around her and behind her. She's looking out the window. She's keeping it down. She's really handling her business. She's taking care of her, her family. She's doing a lot of this by herself without help from anybody else. So, um, so I'm seeing you or many of you are in that energy as well. Okay. <clears throat> Moving on. Oop. The next one we have here, 
what will be the major theme of Mercury retrograde this time around for you? You got the Ace of Fire and Patience. So sometimes, oh, and that does have to do with this situation here, which I will get to. Sometimes we can get really, really super excited about a new creative project, um, something that sparks our passion within us. It could be anything that sparks our passion and sparks excitement and creativity and just where we feel like motivated and we want to move forward and proceed ahead. Um, but right now, the major theme, even though you may feel that way with this Ace of Fire card coming in, you are being called to be patient and to allow things to unfold naturally. For some of you, that could be like new relationships, new, we have the Two of Cups showing up over here, so it could be like a new, um, somebody has sparked your passion, you're really excited about them, but Mercury Retrograde does call you, uh, call to us <laughs> to have patience, to be patient. Don't rush ahead, don't rush forward, allow things to unfold naturally, especially when it comes to a new romantic relationship or um, new creative projects as well, because sometimes things that get sparked during Mercury retrograde can fizzle out afterwards. And so that's why you really want to be patient, patient before you invest too much time or energy into trying to get something going or completed during this time. Instead, it's better to take your time to be methodical and to plan things out during Mercury retrograde. Okay. <clears throat> I just want to make sure I didn't miss any other messages from this section here. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be, it can also be a spiritual, that, that was what it was, a spiritual, um, a spiritual download or in, or, some kind of divine insight or, um, but yeah, I am getting creative passion very strongly. They are, they are saying creative passion very strongly. So whatever that relates to for you. All right. <clears throat> what is the major thing to be cautious of this time? Two of cups and will. So for some of you, this ace of wands, the ace of fire can represent a new, romantic partnership. And again, they're telling you to be patient, um, <clears throat> to be patient and allow the two of you to like with, with the will card coming out and with the two of cups, that would, a harmonious version of the two of cups would be not allowing one person's will to supersede the other person's will. You know what I'm saying? Where you want it to, for, for people to be able to co-create in a relationship or to, to be able to come to, um, so we're, I want to say conclusions, but like you want to come to agreements and compromises together. You want to work together on projects. And again, creative projects as well for some of you. If it's not a romantic project. It could be a creative partnership in some way where you're working on, um, it could be like a charitable thing for people, or it could also be, um, like a mural. Um, I'm trying to, you know, that's one of the creative projects that just pops in my mind. And so again, like you want to, if you're working on a mural, for example, you and another person that maybe you haven't really worked together before, but, um, you know, you've been assigned to work on this mural together. This is just an example, but it could be relevant to somebody. Um, you want to make sure you have a vision in place beforehand. You want to plan everything out carefully just to make sure that the mural is going to look good and everything's going to be proportionate, you know, to the picture and everything when it's finished. And so it does require a good deal of planning and um, figuring out where you're going to put everything on the wall. And someone's vision could start to like, if somebody wants to change something like, oh, well, I know we had planned this for the mural, like for it to have this, but what if we, you know, instead of having these like flowers, 
here that represent like the state flower, we instead put in, you know, something else, um, that type of thing. You know, that's what I'm getting with this card. So it would be like a creative project where almost like a battle of wills <laughs> and you don't want that to happen. Um, you, yeah, you definitely don't want that to happen. You want this to be a positive experience. And again, mercury retrograde can cause confusion. It can cause miscommunication. It can cause misunderstandings. Um, for some people, depending on their placements, their emotions could be running high. Um, and so, you know, just be careful, be careful with that. Like allow things to unfold gracefully, naturally, and plan and co-create with people. Don't try to force your will on others. Okay. <clears throat> then we have, where should pile one keep going forward despite the retrograde? So you got the world card, you got attraction and beginning. So as I mentioned, for somebody, there is a lot of cleaning and clearing that's going on. Um, and that could be like with your personal property. It could be even with somebody else's property. Like if you have a relative or some other friend, um, like inherited items, uh, for somebody inherit, like if you've inherited some items, you've inherited a storage shed, it would be like going through that and, um, clearing some stuff out in your personal space. It could be the same thing clearing, cleaning and clearing your personal space, your garage, you know, and then your energy field, cleaning and clearing your energy field. Sometimes that requires taking some time to evaluate your emotions and your feelings and how you're feeling about certain situations in order to clean and clear the air and how you feel about things in order to be able to pro proceed and move forward. Okay, so a lot of you are tying up loose ends. You're definitely closing out cycles with the world. A lot of you are also have reached a high point in your life or in your career. And so during Mercury retrograde, they want you to revel in that. If you have managed to reach a high point in your life or in your career in some way, now is the time to go ahead and enjoy and be grateful for how far you've come in life. Um, yes. And it could be like, if you have recently overcome a major obstacle and you're at a high point in your life now, you know, you've reached a major goal in your life or some, something along those lines. Now's the time to really enjoy and soak that up, you know? And, uh, yes. And now you can also start to attract Plan what you want to attract for the future and also prepare for new beginnings that are going to be happening after the Mercury retrograde um, is over because that's what I'm seeing that um, once this Mercury retrograde is over for some for some of you, this is kind of like an air a time where you can kind of sit back, relax, rest. Um, like I said, like I said, soak in what you've done, but you know that there are things that are going to be coming in that you're going to have to get up and move forward and work on. And so, and attracting abundance, attracting this personal power and what's going to make you feel like powerful in your own right, in yourself, confident. Influential, feeling influential without having, feeling the need to influence others. That's like a really powerful place to be. You know, if people are influenced by you without you having to control them or manipulate them in some way, that's really powerful energy. And so, um, for some of you, it's like realizing that, you know, that you can be that person. You can be somebody who is influential yet not influencing, <laughs> if that makes sense. So, okay. <clears throat> Advice for pile one from their spirit guides for survival, 10 of pentacles and extremes. As I mentioned previously, don't invest in anything extreme during this time, thinking that it's going to bring you long-term wealth or stability because it's not. Um, for some of you, 
for some of you that is like contemplating easy money and that's just not the way to go is what it, is what they want to say you want to really like think about stability think about what is going to be relevant 10 years from now not just in the moment whatever trend is happening in this moment you know definitely don't invest your money or put all your eggs in in one basket for any kind of trend um yeah they want you to really like if anyone's been trying to approach you also with a lot of heat pressure excitement passion and try to to pressure you to invest in anything um i'm even getting donate or contribute just be cautious be cautious right now because um with the donation thing or the contribution thing um it's not going to pan out for somebody if like somebody has been recently approached to donate it's i'm getting it's not going to pan out they're not even going to you know be able to do what they want to do with the money that they get and so it's like they just end up keeping the money and not using it for whatever they say they're going to use it for so that's a very specific message for somebody for another person i really saw like investing in some sort of business venture but it was very trendy that's a no <laughs> that's what somebody's saying that's what one of the spirits is saying they're all that's a no <laughs> and then for others of you it's like being tempted to try to build long-term wealth the easy route by taking the easy route and we know that that can sometimes turn to um less than uh reputable means you know like maybe even bordering on illegal so just be careful with that um instead try to attract and plan going forward for new beginnings um okay a card to represent pile one at the end of the retrograde so the sun card did come out in the reverse and the growth card so for some of you you've actually been depressed for a very long time with this energy here with you know the, the five of fire the nine of fire conflict I am hearing conflict resolution so there will be some conflict resolution will which will cause you and help you to come out of a deep depression um and again how you look and how you appear to others was very very entrenched in this energy so it's also like realizing with the growth part it doesn't matter what people think because it's your life you're the one who has to live it and that can be very liberating which also is the sun card so coming into that sun card energy um some of you could be disappointed at the end because of if something doesn't turn out with the way you know something doesn't turn out the way you had hoped it would the, if you'd gotten really excited about something with the ace of fire and then at the end it doesn't really pay out or or pay off <laughs> is something i'm getting it could be very disappointing you could feel a bit sad and down over that however it is still an opportunity for growth and expansion um for some of you the disappointment could be not being able to invest in that opportunity or that you know business endeavor but um and that could make you feel sad and depressed and also because of the way treat people treat you if you're not going to be giving them your money you know people treat you differently and that can make you feel sad or bad about yourself or about your connection with people or how people see you as well um but again you can take that money and you can grow it you will have an opportunity to if you were going to invest in like some okay so spirit can be like really 
funny sometimes. <laughs> They're like, if you're going to invest in some fly-by-night such and such, you could take that money and really build for the future, right? Um, and again, uh, like that, like I said, that could be like a business opportunity. That could be like a donation, a charitable donation or something like that, that they swear is, you know, we're going to be able to do this if you donate, blah, blah, blah. So could cause to some disappointment, but it's still an opportunity for growth, particularly like with all this earth energy here, it's financial growth as well. Um, okay. That's what I'm getting. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching and feel free to pick another pile if this one did not resonate. Thank you again. I forgot to mention, if you guys are still tuned in, um, August could be very significant for you. The month of August coming up could be very significant for you in some way. So I just wanted to share that with Leo card coming out here and the sun card. That is Leo energy. Um, so August could be significant or something you may have experienced some sort of a disappointment. If, if August has passed recently, there may have been a disappointment in August for you that you're clearing out and moving away from. So, okay. I just wanted to share that. Thank you so much. Okay. Pile two. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you selected this pile, you selected the sodalite crystal. This says, I am guided by logic and intuition. It also says, um, intuition. It focuses energy and provides guidance. It is connected to the throat and the third eye chakra, and it is the zodiac sign of Sagittarius. So Sagittarius could be prominent in your chart, sun, moon, rising, Venus, or Mars. Um, may have been in the constellation of Sagittarius when you were born. Okay, let's get started. <clears throat> Mercury retrograde for pile two, please, for their highest and greatest good. Okay. A card to represent pile two now during this, whenever this video has found them whenever they're watching card to represent pile two now whenever they're watching a card to represent pile two whenever they watch this pile two what represent okay <clears throat> three of pentacles working together, working on projects. My kitty's showing up. Move, honey. Move. Move, babe. Okay. <clears throat> what will be the major theme of this Mercury retrograde for pile two? Whichever Mercury retrograde it is that they are watching. See, my, my words are like weird right now. It is Mercury retrograde at this time that I record this. So what will be the major theme of this Mercury retrograde for pile two? Page of fire. Okay. What is the major thing to be cautious of for pile two to be cautious of? at this time for a fire for some of you be careful of hiring contractors <laughs> at this time okay we'll get into that later but yeah that that just jumped out really fast okay <clears throat> where should pile to keep going forward despite it being a mercury retrograde judgment we'll get a clarifier for that okay 
there's any kind of a legal situation. Finalizing court paperwork is what I'm getting for some people, but we'll see what that represents for others. Okay, <clears throat> advice for pile two from their spirit guides for survival. Two of wands, branching out, expansion, taking a leap of faith. A card to represent pile two at the end of the retrograde. A card to represent pile two at the end of the retrograde. Card to represent pile two at the end of the retrograde. Bottom of the deck is justice. Again, could be having, dealing with some court issues, legal issues. Um, you got six of pentacles, nine of one, nine of swords, nine of air, and ace of air. Okay. So we'll see what that represents shortly. Let's get the clarifiers. Clarifier cards for pile two for Mercury retrograde. For the Mercury retrograde that they are watching this reading for. Pile two. Okay, clarify number one, the three of earth for pile two, please. Sovereignty and assessing. Okay. Number two, please clarify the number two spot and the page of fire for pile two. Pleasure. Somebody needs to get back to the things that made them happy when they were young. But we'll get into that some more. Okay. <clears throat> spot three. Please clarify spot number three and the four of fire for pile two. Acceptance. Okay. Please clarify spot number four and the judgment card for pile two for their highest and greatest good, please. Okay. Wisdom. Justice. Again, coming out. I feel like saying justice. Justice. <laughs> All right. Spot number five, the two of fire for pile two. Please clarify. Spot number five, the two of fire. Surrender and unexpected. Ooh, that is definitely leap of faith energy here. Okay. And please clarify spot number six. Beginnings. All right. Protection justice okay so as i mentioned some of you all may be dealing with legal battles legal issues legal troubles even um at this time it would definitely benefit you to protect yourself at this time to stay safe to um to stay guarded um you are also protected, however, like if you notice this person is like in a little fetal position inside of an inside of a nest and this bird is literally carrying the nest and carrying you. It's like as though the divine is carrying you through this time. So you are divinely protected during this time as well. But yeah, it is a good time to protect your resources. I'm getting specifically is what they said. And your resources being your money, um, the things that are of value to you, like, you know, anything that you have that's of value. Okay, <clears throat> including your information. 
including your personal information. Okay. All right. A car, some cards to represent pile two's energy. Now you got the three of pentacles, sovereignty and assessing. So it looks like right now you have been working together with other people. However, you are also wanting to be more sovereign, have more independence as well as more authority over your life. And you are definitely assessing the situation. If you look at this card, this person is looking out into the beyond, into the great beyond with the telescope to see what's out there and what's available and what their options are possibly. And so, um, so yeah, during this time, you, and it does look like this person is really excited and happy to be there. Like they love their job. They're excited. They're happy. And these two people are just like, blah, like they're, they're not happy. <laughs> so I don't know. I, it makes me feel like you might be this person where you get to work and you're like, hey, what's up? How's it going? And everybody's just like all, uh. <laughs> and, and you're just, you know, and it's taking a toll on you, actually. It's taking a toll on you. And it is causing you to feel kind of like, you know, maybe I'd like to do my own thing. Is that even possible? I don't know. You know, so it's causing you to to question what's possible, basically. Um, that's what I'm getting here. Hang on. I'm sorry. Woo, honey. <laughs> All right. Um, yes. So I'm definitely getting that with work for a large group of you. That there's... Um, that you're like happier, the happiest person to be there. <laughs> and everybody else is just like, <laughs> so, um, all right, moving on. What will be the major theme of Mercury retrograde this time for pile two? So you got the page of fire and pleasure. So again, what's going to make you happy in life? What's really like, what really sparks your passion? And, um, this is getting back to that energy of youth, the things that made you excited when you were young. And also what I'm getting is, um, the major theme is reconnecting with the things that give you that creative spark or the spiritual spark or that spark of passion, whatever that is. Reconnecting with that time in your life when you were young and fresh and you were easily excited by something, um, whatever the case may be, you know, like for me, it's roller skating. <laughs> I used to love roller skating. I would get so excited to go roller skating, go to the roller rink. You're just like, yes. And, you know, and then as you get older, you know, you get tired and you're just like, ugh, I'm too tired to roller skate. You know, it's like that energy. It's reconnecting. And for some of you, it is also, if you're in a particular career field, it would be reconnecting to that time when you decided and you chose the career field that you were going into, right? And how did you feel about it? You know, you, you were like, I'm choosing this career path. I'm so excited. I'm going to be learning about all these things. I'm going to be making so much money in the future once I get done with my schooling. You know, things like that. It's reconnecting with that energy and not getting sucked into the doldrums, especially with this energy here coming in and this being you know, affecting you, especially if it's like a particular career path, you know, for some of you, it could be like, if you went to medical school, and you're so excited to be going to medical school, you know, back when you decided you were going to be a doctor, and you started going to medical school, you were like, so excited to go to school to go to class to 
listen to the lectures, to take your notes, to do all the um, rounds, making the rounds and all that stuff. Like you really, truly enjoyed it. But now you're at work, you're working in a hospital, you're happy and excited to be there. And everybody is just like, blah. And it's dragging you down. And so reconnecting to that passion is definitely highlighted right now. I'm hearing spark your energy. What sparks your energy? Because that is important. Because otherwise, if we're not living with the, with the page of fire and the pleasure card, if we're not living in a way where we're able to do things that spark our energy, that make us feel vivacious and alive, then life can be a total drag. It can just be a total drag. And it can literally, like when I say drag, like they call it drag for a reason because it just drags on your energy. It just pulls, <laughs> pulls on your energy, you know, really draining. Okay. What is the major thing for pile two to be cautious of at this time? So we have the four of fire and we have acceptance. For some of you, four of fire does represent a wedding, a marriage, um, it represents a household, a celebration can also represent a celebration. So for some of you, whatever the four of fire represents to you. So for some of you, it could be like a wedding or a marriage. And it is a, a matter of accepting that that is. That, you know, like, let's say if somebody else has gotten married and you didn't want that person to get married, just accepting the fact that they have gotten married. And let's see, sorry, cautious of at this time. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So also what I'm getting to is there is an energy of accepting or not accepting that this is the way that life has to be as well. Like when, when it comes to work, like, you know, in a work situation, working together with other people, it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to feel that way where you're the happiest one there and everybody's just like, just there because they have to be, but not because they want to be, you know, like you, it doesn't have to be that way. Life doesn't have to be that way, as I mentioned. So something to be cautious of is accepting that energy too readily that things are the way they are for some of you if it's a home situation like accepting that this is where I live this is my house this is how it is I just have to deal with it and in reality you know you don't if it's your house and you're not happy with it you can change things in your house. You can do things to your house to change your house, to make it more of something that you like and that you enjoy and that you feel comfortable, like your sanctuary and like your little nest here. You know, if you live in a neighborhood where you're not happy, going back to houses and feeling safe, if you're living in a neighborhood where you don't feel safe and you're not happy and you can do things, you don't have to accept that you're living in a bad neighborhood and you know this is how it is now I'm you know getting my packages stolen off my front porch you don't have to accept that you can do things to protect yourself you can do things to your home to increase your level of protection so for some of you I'm seeing that's the case um But for others of you, it is finally accepting something. And it's like, if it's something that you have been resistant of accepting for a long time, you are being cautioned not to resist any longer, to accept and to surrender. For some of you, that is the ending of a marriage. And is, is that accepting that, you know, the four of wands, the marriage is 
is over too. And so it just depends on how that resonates for you and your life. Family. For some of you, um, there are certain situations in your family that you're not happy with. Maybe you don't really care for the way your, your kids are living their life. And, um, you know, it's like you have to accept that if you want to keep that person in your life. Um, and you're being cautioned about that right now. So... I'm also hearing family status. Um, I'm seeing a particular situation with regard to an inheritance of a house or some sort of inheritance. Like let's say the grandmother died or the grandparents have passed away. There are all of the children of that person who just passed away plus their grandchildren. And so those are like families, like like each of the children of the person who have passed has started their own family, right? And there's one family that is getting more valuable things than your family, for example. And you've got to accept that. And it's like, you may have thought that your status, your family status in the eyes of whoever has passed, you know, that you were in their good graces is what I'm hearing, that you were in the will, that your family was going to receive uh, certain things um, that maybe had been um, conveyed to you in some way, like I'm getting that energy, oh, someday this could all be yours. You know what I mean? And then come to find out once that person actually passes away, that's like, nope, it's your brother and his kids that are going to get it, not you. That type of thing. So um, coming to acceptance that that's how that is. So for some of you, there's different scenarios going on, obviously, because this is a collective reading. So take this as it resonates. But um, those are some of the situations that I'm seeing. Okay, <clears throat> moving on. Where should pile two keep going forward despite the retrograde? So the judgment card and wisdom. Continuing to be discerning is definitely um, what spirit wants to say. They're saying continuing to be discerning with the judgment card, not to be like, you know, you're passing judgment on all these people and you're, you know, separating yourself from people and you're looking down on others because you're being very judgmental. But it's a matter of being discerning, understanding different situations and the people around you and, and being able to understand people for who they, who and what they are is one of the things that I'm getting. And so, um, oh, in this card, there's a little angel here that is hanging on to the back of a swan, like as though the, fla the swan is a floaty device. And it's just really sweet and very calm and peaceful and protective and and um, with the protection energy here, with this card of protection, birds could be very significant, significant at this time. I'm seeing something about you noticing, pay attention to migration patterns of birds, the direction. I'm seeing something about the direction of flight for certain, like birds, being able to tell you something about like, if you go on a hike and you get lost <laughs> and you lose your sense of direction, sometimes depending on the time of year, certain birds fly in certain directions, right? And so that can tell you the direction the bird is flying can tell you the direction that you need to go. For example, um, <clears throat> like birds fly south for the winter, that type of thing. So if the birds are flying, it's springtime, 
summertime, the birds are flying. Maybe they're, you know, good chance they're flying north. Um, so that direction would be north if you follow the birds. So that may be relevant to somebody. Um, okay. But judgment card. Discerning is just really coming through very strongly. Being discerning. Um, wisdom. Embracing your wisdom. Using your wisdom. Using your life experiences in order to gain a sense of clarity over certain situations in your life. It can be very powerful. It can be a very, like, very, very good place to be in where you can say, especially in a time where you may not really be sure about whether or not to allow someone or something back into your life or to forgive someone or some situation if you're having a hard time with that, tap into your wisdom and your experience. And I'm seeing something about writing it down um, in order to gain clarity. So somebody literally like they might have to write things out like, OK, in my experience, I went through this at this time on this date. And this could be relevant if you have a court case going on again, like I said, judgment but using that wisdom and that experience, writing it down, and I am seeing something about like noting the dates and the times of things that have happened and being able to utilize that wisdom and that experience in order to, you know, get a fair judgment. Okay. I hope that makes sense for somebody. Um, that definitely feels more court related. Um, I feel like there's something else. Sorry. What else, spirit? What else does pile two need to know about judgment and wisdom? Flighty people, flighty energies. If anyone um, is trying to come back around or or like get in your good graces that type of thing if they feel like if there's a situation where somebody feels like maybe they have upset you for some reason or they really have upset you even for some reason um and now they're trying to come back around and like smooth things over you can use your wisdom and the experience that you gained from your interactions with that person and any other person that reminds you of that individual, you can use that experience to protect yourself to your advantage also is what I'm getting. For your own safety and well-being is what Spirit is saying. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense, you guys. That was kind of deep, but, but yeah, it's like, it definitely feels like somebody's not super trustworthy is what I'm getting. And they may be trying to come back into your life or trying to like, if there's, oh, oh gosh. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. It took me so long for some of you. If your marriage, if you're accepting that your marriage is over, okay, the person is coming back and wanting to work things out and it just feels less than sincere is what I'm getting. Um, it just feels less than sincere. It feels like whatever it was that you didn't like about the situation before, whatever experiences you had from the situation before, that um, it's going to continue. That person is going to do what they can to smooth things over until you have gotten you know, in their, or they've gotten in your good graces again, and then they're just going to go back to normal. That's what I'm like. Normal is their normal. That's their normal. So 
you know, during this time, during this Mercury retrograde, they may be acting on their best behavior. They may be really trying to smooth things over and, um, but it's temporary is what I'm getting. Okay. I hope that makes sense, but use your wisdom, use your experiences, past experiences that you've had with that type of person, with that person and that type of person, and use that information to your advantage in order to protect yourself and your well-being. And it will help you to receive justice, not only within the courts, but also within your life. Okay. <clears throat> Advice from your guides for survival. You got the two of wands and you got the surrender card and you also got the unexpected. So with the two of wands, going back to the page of fire, um, this card to me is like taking a leap of faith. It could also be like, seem like a leap of faith in a partnership because it's like the way I see this particular tarot card, this prince, he's, he's obviously a prince. He's got a crown here. He's got his servant staff here. And he was literally willing to strip everything that he owns and give up everything in order for, in order to step forward into a life with this woman. And it's like a roller coaster. There's a roller coaster. There's a time clock. I mean, so... <clears throat> For some of you, there may be a situation like that coming in where, you know, to surrender to the unexpected because the two of wands is also a card of planning, of planning your next moves, of planning your future, of planning ahead and and sometimes you can't receive the blessings that are trying to come your way if you try to plan too much or control things too much sometimes you do have to take a leap of faith in certain situations um Yeah, for some of you, it feels like there's going to be a very, very unexpected opportunity that you were not expecting at all. Like, obviously, unexpected. <laughs> it's unexpected. <laughs> um, and it's going to call. It's going to call on you to just surrender and take a leap of faith. I do feel this is. Um, I'm seeing that this is something that may happen that may come up during the retrograde period. However, you won't be really ready to act on that situation until after afterwards, but we'll get into that here shortly in a minute. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for some of you, it is literally like you may, it may be like where you leave everything behind to go work in another city, for example, or another town where you literally like, you know, you don't even pack up anything, you just go. <laughs> um, or it might not even be like a creative project. It might just be like, a, or I mean, not a job. I mean, like a creative project. It could be something that sparks your passion, whatever it is. It's something that makes you excited, something that sparks your passion, something, you know, that's something that you've been wanting to do for a really long time but you never thought was possible. For some of you, that is the case. Um, for others of you, I am seeing that in the past, you may have given up everything for relationships. You may have given up everything. You may have been willing to give up everything for a romantic partner. And 
that's not necessarily very healthy sometimes because what we what we run the risk of doing whenever we do that is we also give up ourselves. We give up something that we have that makes us happy um, in some situations. We can give up our happiness. We can give up those things that are unique to us because the other person's not interested in that or the other person doesn't want to do that or the other person doesn't believe in that. And so for some of you, it is a matter of surrendering that habit, surrendering that habit. And it does make room for some unexpected positive changes in your life. And with the blue moon, with the unexpected and the blue moon, a blue moon is when there are two full moons in one month. So it's almost like getting a second chance. Um, so for some of you, for some of you, there is some sort of a second chance or an opportunity for a second chance with, and also with the two of wands coming up for a situation, but it will be very unexpected. The second chance will be very unexpected and you will have to surrender something in your life in order to be able to receive that opportunity. Second chance at life, a second chance at love. Um, but yeah, for some of you, I am definitely seeing that um, this card does represent taking a leap of faith in some situations, but it, can, it is also reminding me of people who have in the past have been willing to give up everything, every aspect of themselves just to make somebody else happy. That's not healthy. And that is also something that if any of you have ever been that way in your life, that is something to surrender, to let go of. Um, it's not good for you as a person to live that way or to be that way. It does not, it's not conducive to your survival. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> All right. Card to represent pile two at the end of this retrograde when they are watching. So you got the ace of swords. That is truth. Truth. You're going to find out the truth about something. Whatever this four of fire is and the acceptance, whatever that's it, whatever the four of fire represents to you, I meant, I went through that. Um, it can represent different things. Um, whatever that is to you, you're going to learn a truth con connected to that and that it will help you accept things. You know, it'll help you accept what it is that you need to accept. For some of you, if it's a marriage that's ending, you're going to learn some truths and that's going to help you accept the situation for what it is. It's going to help you accept the person that you are married to for who they really are and accept the situation, yeah, like accept the situation um, and move forward and move on. Make room for new opportunities is what I'm getting. Um, for others of you, it will be standing in your truth, reconnecting. And again, this could also be the same people because we have different situations going on in our lives. Um many, many things going on at once sometimes. So you may also be able to reconnect to this page of fire energy and the pleasure energy and reconnect to who you truly are, what makes you happy, what sparks your passion and your interest and what makes you feel alive and youthful and vivacious. And standing in that truth of yourself and who you are is you're going to have that at the end of this retrograde. You will have, if any of you are suffering, <laughs> oh God, suffering from legal battles, I'm sorry, sorry to laugh. Um, it was, I just laughed at the way they said that, the suffering and then legal battles, suffering at legal battles, which definitely can be very stressful and very gut-wrenching, heart-wrenching, painful. Um, however, the truth is on your side. So that's, you've got that in your favor. 
And um, so there's that. Okay. Nine of Swords, you may feel very, um, at the end of this Mercury retrograde, you could be feeling very confused. You could be feeling very anxious. Um, you may not be sleeping very well at the end of the Mercury retrograde. Um, you may also be having dreams or feel like you're being attacked in your dreams, like spiritual attack while you're trying to sleep. And so you just have like bad dreams or like really weird dreams. Um, so, and that could be happening during the course of just with everything that's going on in your life, you could be having like really weird or really bad dreams. And um, for some of you, that will be cleared at the end of the Mercury retrograde period. Um, that disruption in your sleep will be cleared is what I'm getting. Uh, because of the truth, because you finally know the truth and you finally are able to accept the truth of the situation, whatever it is, whatever it is for you, whatever the truth is. Um, for some of you with your work situation, with the three of earth, um, it's like recognizing this is not why I got into this field in order just to be doing this type of work. You know what I'm saying? Like if you entered in a certain field, um, a specialized field of some kind, and you went to school for it, you got educated for it, and then they put you, instead of you being a doctor um, doing this type of medicine that you want to be doing, they put you in an office. And they're like, we want you to review these medical files for the insurance company. <laughs> It's like you're working at a hospital, you're a doctor, and they put you to paperwork for the insurance malpractice lawsuits. I'm getting that type of thing. And that's like, and you're finally like, this is not why I became a doctor. <laughs> I became a doctor so I could work with patients one-on-one -on -one specifically to help people, to save lives, whatever the case may be. And, um, again, the doctor is just, you know, I am getting that somebody, it could be literally you went to medical school and, and all that stuff, but it feels like a very specialized field for somebody where you had to get like additional education or licensure in order to be able to do the work. Six of pentacles. So this is an energy of equal give and take fairness and equality. And I am hearing trust as well. It's hard to have that equal give and take when you don't trust that the person is going to be fair and isn't going to take more than their share is what I'm getting for some of you. So for some of you, you may have lived for a very long time um, where you tried to have balance and equal reciprocity, but you also didn't trust people enough to be able to just take what was theirs and nothing more. And so being in a place where you will feel, and I'm feeling for this also connect, this is connecting to that energy of like, if there was inherit, an inheritance of some kind, somebody passed away and you inherited, you know, a plot of land, or you thought you were going to inherit a plot of land. But then, like I said, you know, your brother or your uncle ended up getting it instead of your mom or that type of thing. Or, um, yeah, you thought your family was going to get something and instead some other family, one of your other relatives or another family got it. Um, there is still going to be an opportunity for an equal give and take. So you will still receive a fair amount of compensation for something. You will still be satisfied and, and realize and understand that what you end up getting is fair for your needs. So for some of you, it could have been like your family was competing against some other families for some kind of financial assistance and, and support also in some way. 
like a house. A house. Um, I am seeing a situation where it might be like housing assistance and you and another family are applying for the same house. And you have to accept that you did not get the house that you wanted. This other family got the house. However, it does look like you are going to get an appropriate sized house for your family. Um, it could be a situation where that house had, you know, three bedrooms instead of two bedrooms. You really only need two bedrooms. That person really needed three bedrooms, you know, but you thought like when you applied for it, you're like, oh my gosh, I would just love to have that third bedroom. It would be so amazing. I could have a home office. I could have a guest bedroom, you know, and you were really, really hoping that you were going to get the house. But I am seeing a situation where you will receive what you need. And, um, and then we have here beginnings as well. So, uh, the beginnings card did come out in reading number one and pile one. So check that out if you feel so inclined. Um, but yes, at the end of this Mercury retrograde, all the things that went down, all of the stuff, the valuations you've done within yourself, um, what makes you feel happy and alive and vivacious and vibrant, what um, protecting your resources. It's just going to prime you for a new beginning in some area of your life. If you're getting a divorce, all the legal struggles and everything, it's going to prime you for a new beginning in your life in some kind of way. Again, if it's like a job situation and like your career path and, and you're not feeling happy with the direction that your career is going and you're like, I did not sign up for this. This is not what I signed on for. New beginnings coming your way. So that is really positive, positive energy. So I hope you all found this reading helpful. Um, please feel free to choose another pile if you're so inclined. Again, this is a general reading, so don't force it to fit if it doesn't fit. Thank you so much again. Have a great day. Pile three, thank you so much for watching. If you pick this pile, this is your reading. You selected the hematite crystal, and this card says, I detoxify and transmute stress into balance and harmony. It represents grounding, balancing, and detoxifying. It absorbs negative energy, and it also re represents willpower. Willpower did come out in the first reading, um, so feel free to check that reading if you feel so inclined. Um, it represents the root chakra and it also represents the zodiac signs of Aquarius and Aries. So you could have, um, Aquarius or Aries strongly placed in your chart. If your sun sign, rising sign, moon sign, um, uh, Venus or Mars, we're in the constellation of Aquarius or Aries when you were born. Okay, I've shuffled the cards to your energy. Let's just give it one more shuffle. Pile three, please. Mercury retrograde for their highest and greatest good. Okay. A card to represent pile three's energy right now that they are watching this reading. Pile three. Pile three's energies. Pile three's energies at this time. What are pile three's energies at this time? Page of Cups. Creativity. Very creative. Feeling very creative. Okay. <clears throat> what will pile excuse me, what will be the major theme of Mercury retrograde this time for pile two, pile three, sorry, <laughs> pile three. Okay. King of cups. Somebody who is very connected to their emotions could also be a water sign like Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, or they could have strong placements in their chart of Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces. What is the major thing for 
pile three to be cautious of this time during this Mercury retrograde that they are watching this reading. What is the major thing that pile three needs to be cautious of? What is the major thing? This is a lot, pile three. <laughs> Eight of Pentacles. Eight of Earth. The Fool card. The Tower card. The Seven of Fire card. And the Hermit card. Okay, I'm going to take all those. We'll just break it down. All right. <clears throat> Where should Pile 3 keep going forward despite the retrograde? Where should Pile 3 keep going forward despite this Mercury retrograde? Queen of Air, Temperance, Page of Fire, Four of Fire. Okay. Take all those two. <laughs> Advice from the spirit guides for survival for pile three. What is some advice for survival from pile three's spirit guides? Advice for survival. Two of swords, decisions, decisiveness, feeling pressured to make decisions. We'll see what happens with that. A card to represent pile three at the end of the retrograde, the Mercury retrograde. A card to represent pile three. Queen of Pentacles. And at the bottom, Ace of Fire. Okay, let's get some clarifiers. Please clarify the first spot and the page of water for pile three page of water gratitude and abundance Aww. that's lovely energy to be in pile three beautiful okay spot number two and the king of water please clarify spot number two and the king of water for pile three sovereignty that came out in pile two's reading as well. Okay. <clears throat> what is the major thing that pile three needs to be cautious of during this Mercury retrograde? What is the major, what is the major thing that pile three needs to be cautious of during the Mercury retrograde? What is the major thing that pile three needs to be? Okay. Beauty. That's a lot of energy. <laughs> it's a lot of stuff to be cautious of pile three. We'll break it down. Okay. Where should pile three keep going forward despite the mercury retrograde? Clarify, please. Where should pile three keep? Okay. Okay. Self-reflection in the void. Okay. Please clarify advice for pile from pile three's spirit guides. Advice from pile three's spirit guides. Woof. Okay. Darkness and beginnings again. Beginnings came out in all three of these readings. All right. <clears throat> a card to represent pile three at the end of this Mercury retrograde, please. A card to represent pile three. Protection. Queen of Pentacles. And Wisdom. Okay. Protection came out in the first reading and Wisdom came out in the second reading. So... You may want to, if you feel so inclined, feel free to check out the other piles. <clears throat> okay. Ace of Fire and the Wisdom card. 
I'm getting that you're at a stage in your life right now where you have acquired a lot of wisdom and knowledge. For some of you with the Ace of Fire, now it's time to use that information and that knowledge. It's time to create even. Um, I'm hearing spark of passion as well. You've gained many life experiences and you know yourself very well. You know you have evaluated and you know what makes you tick. And so you also know whenever something in your life just ain't it. <laughs> is what I'm getting. So. Okay. A card to represent pile three's energy right now. So you got page of cups, gratitude, and abundance. You are in a really beautiful place right now. As I mentioned, you are feeling very strong in yourself. You feel confident because of all of the knowledge that you have and the education that you have. It's interesting because in the background of this card, there's two, it's like the same ladies in the background, you know. And so because of this abundance, you have this abundant, you're in a very abundant position right now. You're just feeling like you're everything in your life, you're able to see how blessed you are with everything you have. And you're very grateful for that as well, because you realize that there's people in this world that don't have nearly as much as you do, which is very unique. A lot of people can't see that, you know, they focus on all the little things, they focus on the lack and all the things that they're lacking, but you're able to see all the things that you do have in life. You know, you're able to recognize that there's many people in this world that don't even have, you know, furniture, <laughs> for example, in their homes. Like they literally have to make furniture out of cinder blocks or logs and just like make a makeshift bed or a makeshift couch or, you know, things like that. Like you're very aware of the plight of the world also is what I'm getting. Um, and because of this feeling and sense of um, recognizing all the ways that you've been blessed and all of the abundance that you have, it supports this gratitude. And so that's what, you know, one of the things that they say is gratitude brings more abundance because when you tell the universe that I am grateful for these things that I have, you know, it just sends the signal to the universe. Oh, good. Send more, send more, you know? And so that's what I'm seeing with these two cards here. And with the page of water, the page of cups, um, you're feeling very creative. You could even have divine. Hello. Okay. We got cut off. My SD card is full. So, <clears throat> okay. Where was I? <laughs> Um, what will be the major theme of Mer Mercury retrograde this time for pile three? Excuse me. Pardon me. <laughs> My tongue is tied. All right. So what I was seeing is for some of you, there may be a male figure, possibly even a father figure who is trying to influence your life in some way, some way, shape or form. And you could be a little bit afraid of this person's emotions. Like you don't want to upset them for some reason, whatever the case may be. But you also don't really want to do what they want you to do. You want to do your own thing with the sovereignty card here. You want to have the power and the control over your own life. You don't want this person to manipulate you emotionally into doing what they want just because, you know, they think it's best, right? Because that's what I'm getting. Like somebody thinks that something is best for their child and um, you just have a whole other 
goal in life that this person cannot fathom or comprehend. Okay, so so there's that. Um, for some of you, you're connected to a person and it could be romantic it could also just be like a role model like a male role model who has helped you to stand in your truth and in your power because of their emotional stability and how genuine they are they're like really connected to who they are within themselves and and they're very wise and they're also very patient, I'm getting, um, or calm. And that person has helped you to see what is possible for yourself. So for some of you, it's like a father figure or somebody that's like wanting to manipulate and control your life. For others of you, this person represents somebody who is an inspiration who you're gaining a lot of um, wisdom from and somebody who has given you the confidence to stand in your power. Um, they've been very supportive. They've provided a lot of emotional support when nobody else has for some of you. And that's actually making me want to cry. <laughs> so that is very sweet. That is so sweet. Okay. Um, I am getting an energy. This is definitely not uh, more, this is more specific. Um, for some of you, you are trying to teach a young person. It's, it's like they're an adult and they could be a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, but you're trying to teach that person how to be more independent. You're trying to teach that person how to be able to live on their own, to be on their own, to take control of their life. And this person is very like almost lackadaisical about life and things. Like they just don't, like they're not rushed by anything. They don't see the urgency or the importance of anything. Um, and you're really trying like to get them to understand that they need to be more independent, that they need to be able to stand on their own two feet is what I'm getting here. So take it as it resonates. Three different scenarios um, for this pile, at least three different scenarios for this pile. So again, take it as it resonates. Don't force it to fit if it doesn't fit. And the scenarios that I give, those are also examples. Like some, for some of you, it is very specific, but others, it's like a, just an example of something that's, a similar thing that's going on in your life. All right. What is the major thing to be for pile three to be cautious of this time? So we got eight of pentacles here. This is like honing your craft. So for those of you, if there's like some kind of creative project, um, this would represent investing your time and your money into honing your craft and into fine tuning everything. So with the, if you notice here, the heart with the lock or the heart, which is a lock with the key, that person. So here you've got your own lock and your own key, right? And so, as I mentioned, for some of you, if it's your father figure or some other fatherly type role model, that's trying to get you to do something that you don't want to do or to live your life in a certain kind of way, it's like, I've done this and it worked for me. I've done this for 50 years and it worked great. It worked great for me. And I just want you to pick up where I left off and just keep it going, you know, and like, but you're here with your lock and your key and you're like, no, I'm trying to figure out what, you know, which of these keys is going to unlock my heart, my, you know, cause this is like, he's like, yep. Here's my heart. Here's, this is what makes me tick. 
I've got this going. I just, you know, I've got it all set in place. And you're in a position where you're like trying out all these different keys, trying to see which one is really going to help you stand in your truth, stand in your power, um, <clears throat> help you live the kind of life that you want to live, help you be the kind of person that you want to be, um, help you do with your life what you want to do with it. And again, like I said, for some of you, it's like a father figure who's trying to get you to be a certain way. For others of you, this person has been very influential influential and inspirational, whoever this person is. You look at them like a role model. And it could also be that, you know, that person that wants you to do what they want you to do, you do see them as a role model. You are like, wow, you know, they've done so much with their lives, but I don't want to do what they did the way they did it. I want to do it my way right? And so it's like that type of energy. But others of you, it's like this person has been a very influential person. It could also be a spiritual spiritual leader or somebody who's very spiritually connected. And they have given you the power and the inspiration for you to be able to, to, to branch out and to feel confident enough to step out on your own um, to be sovereign, to be strong within yourself. Um, and then for others of you, it is a matter of like, if you're trying to help someone be this, if this king of water is a, a young person, it, they're an adult, but they're like, they act like a child. <laughs> they think they're a teenager still. And you're trying to get them to like, figure out, like, you got to figure it out. You know, you need to figure out life. You need to figure out a job. You got to get to work. You got to learn how to stand on your own two feet. You can't be living with me for the rest of your life. It's like that kind of energy. And so you're trying to inspire them. You're trying to inspire them to, you know, try out some different things in life and see what, you know, sparks their interest. Um, <clears throat> and then we got the full card, which represents new beginnings. And we got here advice for survival did beginnings did come out. And so um, be cautious of, oh goodness, sorry, hang on. Move, move babe, move babe. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Okay, for some of you, um, you may receive an offer and during Mercury retrograde, now is not necessarily the time to accept any kind of new offers without, you know, really getting to know the situation, the ins and outs of everything. Um, and you got the tower card and the seven of wands. So what I'm also seeing with this particular card with the cards here is for some of you, you just started something new and all of a sudden it is falling apart. Um, something happened. And then the seven of wands are here. So that is also destruction energy. Um, it's an energy of, for some of you, it's an energy of having to fight for what you believe in. Because you want to take a new start and a fresh start, but for some of you, somebody's creating a tower where you feel like you have to def fight to defend yourself. You have to fight to justify yourself. You have to fight to protect yourself. You have to fight for who you are, you have to fight for your right to live the kind of life that you want to live. And that's something to be cautious of at this time. Of course, because you want to avoid ex extreme destruction is what I'm getting. So um for others of you, I was just connecting to the energy of this young person who needs to learn how to be independent and stand on their own two feet. 
Um, this is a very specific message for somebody. Um, but I am getting that they may have started something new or they may be branching out. They may be wanting to branch out and do something and it's very foolish. And you're trying, you're trying to get them to see things long term for the future. And they're just like, you know, doing something haphazardly, um, you know, just like suddenly. And, and you're concerned about it and it causes this tower and it causes a fight. And I am hearing destruction. So you do want to, you don't want to destroy your relationship over this is what I'm getting. Um, yeah, you don't want to destroy your relationship that you have. If this is a child of yours, um, for others of you in this situation, they started something new, you were trying to be supportive of it, but a tower happened. And now they might even be in some kind of a little bit of trouble. Um, and the solution is for them to go to school. <laughs> so it's like, okay. And it could be legal trouble. It could be like trouble with the law. Um, or, and it's not, I, there's no justice card or anything that came out here. Hang on, let me just make sure. Yeah. The justice card didn't come out in this situation. So if there is a, any kind of a, a fear of them getting into legal trouble or like going down the wrong path in life, um, it's a false alarm. Okay. Is what I'm getting. And, um, but the solution is for them to go to school. If you see, like, here's the tower, there's the tower on fire in the background and, the child or the person, this young person is exiting that situation and going off to get an education. So it could also be, you know, who they're hanging around with, with for some of you. It's like, and getting them away from those negative influences. And it could be, yeah, like something happens, like there's a tower and that's like a wake up call. With the fool in the tower, that's a wake up call. And um, to get out of a, a potentially bad situation and focus on the long term. And so I am seeing that going to school, going to college will help. Okay. <clears throat> for those of you who see this individual as an inspiration for your own journey, the Hermit card is a call to you to self-reflect, to hone your craft with the Eight of Pentacles, to self-reflect, to hone your, hone your craft, to um, gain the wisdom that you need in order to, to make whatever they've done for their lives work for your life. So this person who's an inspiration to you. Um, and again, it could be a spiritual inspiration. Like they could be a very spiritual person, not that they're a priest or a minister or anything like that, but they've managed to use their intuition. Let's say they've managed to use, use their intuition to go a really long way in life. And so now you know, that's like so amazing to you that somebody was able to do that. And so now this is your opportunity to learn more about yourself and to connect with yourself and to see what it is that you can do in order to replicate that in your own life and achieve some of the goals that you want to achieve for yourself in life. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, so with the beauty card coming out, um, for some of you, the message with the beauty card is do not be fooled by appearances. 
Okay. This is definitely not a time for you to focus on the superficial or to make decisions based on superficial information or superficial appearances. This is t a time for introspection. This is a time for evaluation. This is a time for learning. For some of you, um, if there's a situation with a, a young person in your life that you're trying to get to stand on their own two feet, there could be a female influence, a negative female influence, a very beautiful person that is um, a bad influence, possibly, or you're worried that they're a bad influence and, um, and they're like all about their looks, you know, Okay, some of you could be interested in getting into beauty and cosmetics as well with the Hermit card and the Eight of Pentacles. Some of you could be very interested in learning more about beauty and cosmetics, like for the long term and really honing your craft and, and your skills and your abilities in order to bring more beauty um, into the world to everyday people. But yeah, there may be some sort of an, an occurrence and just be careful with the Fool, the Tower card and the Seven of Fire where it's like something that just started out, had so much potential something that you were just moving towards, something that you may have even taken a leap of faith towards, like something that you maybe didn't necessarily want to do or were interested in doing, but you took a leap of faith um, that everything would work out well. And it's like all of a sudden the tower comes crashing down and, and there's some destruction here and you have to defend yourself or fight for yourself in some kind of way. So, and it could be fighting for your reputa reputation um, for some of you. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. <clears throat> Hopefully that makes sense. Where should pile three keep going forward despite it being Mercury retrograde? So you got Queen of Swords. You got the Temperance card. Page of Fire. Four of Fire and self-reflection. So definitely now, as I mentioned with the Hermit card coming out, now is a time, oh, and the Void. Now is a time for you to self-reflect. Um, to self-reflect on who you want to be as a person. Again, um, what makes you feel passionate? What sparks your creativity? Um, you can also now maybe also be a time with the beauty card coming out. That is also a message for you not to be too preoccupied with your appearance. Like if any, anyone out there is an aging female, you know, this is that energy of still feeling beautiful, even though you may not feel as pretty as you once did. Um... It's like also even or or even if you're not aging, if you're young and a young person, it's still evaluating that concept of what is beauty? What is beauty really? And you know, cuz they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And so Meditating on that, reflecting on that within yourself. What makes you feel attractive? What makes you feel beautiful? What makes you feel special? Now is a good time to sleep, <laughs> to get rest. Um, as well. So if you have opportunities for rest, and self-reflection, 
go ahead and take those opportunities as they come up. For some of you also evaluating on the shadow aspect of yourself um, is very significant. Some of you may need to ask yourself, like with the, with the full card and the tower card and the seven of fire, if you keep getting yourself into certain situations, it's like, don't be afraid to ask yourself, why do I keep getting myself into these situations? Why do I keep, you know, falling for or being foolhardy or being gullible? It's like, why am I like that? Why am I that way? What is the cause? What is the root cause of that for me? So for some of you, really diving deep and digging down deep into yourself to know the the causes and the root of the way you feel about beauty about um sovereignty independence um creative spark creative passion happiness Okay, <clears throat> so being with the Two of Swords coming out here. Sorry, hang on. The kitty is back. Move, babe. Come on. Lay down. Just lay down right there. <laughs> okay, with the Two of Swords coming out here in advice from your spirit guides and the Queen of Swords, this is a very decisive energy. So now is the time to lay out your options is what I'm getting. And you can make some decisions about some things. You don't necessarily need to act on those decisions with the Ace of Fire here. That would be acting, um, action, and, and moving forward. But now is the time where you can lay everything out for yourself and you can, and you can um, plan ahead and you can make decisions. And then once the Mercury retrograde is over you can implement those decisions. With the temperance card, this is divine guidance, divine balance. So focused on prayer, focus on meditation, focus on uh, connecting with your spirit guides in order to help you make the best decisions possible for yourself connect with um, those types of energies in order to help you out during this time, during this time of self-reflection and a time when you need to make some choices in your life because that is what it's looking like. And it, and it is a matter of like with this queen of air, she knows what she wants and she knows what she doesn't want. And she's perfectly able to say, no, thank you. I'll pass <laughs> whenever somebody's coming forward with an offer. Like, for some of you, as I mentioned, somebody may be coming forward with an offer at this time and it would be most beneficial for you to just say, I'll pass. No, thanks. <laughs> you know, they're like, here, here's my offer, handing it and here, like, here it is again. And you're like, no, I'm good. And um, you're like, I've had enough. Thank you. <laughs> so discerning knowing that within yourself page of fire again this is connecting to your spiritual spark your creative passion because creativity did come up very strong in this reading with the page of water the page of cups coming out um so connecting to that very strongly um which is going to help you in the future. It's going to help you going forward with, you know, for those of you that need to, where you yourself need to be, be sovereign and to stand in your own truth and your own power and to live your own life the way you want to live it, not the way somebody else wants you to live it. You know, now's the time for you to make those decisions and for you to really tap into that creative spark because that is what's going to help propel you forward with this Ace of Fire. 
<clears throat> the four of fire and the temperance card um focusing on your home life also will benefit you at this time home improvements um planning home improvements um For some of you, standing on your own two feet and not living the life that somebody else wants you to live is a matter of finding a different place to live. And so it's encouraged if that's your situation where you need to move out onto your own and get away from this person that's trying to get you to live, you know, just follow in their footsteps and live the kind of life that they want to want you to live. You may have to separate yourself from this person and, and get your own place. And for others of you, if it's a young person, um, that you're trying to get them to be independent, sovereign, and you're trying to get them out into the world, um, <clears throat> and maybe even get them off to school, you know, you got to find them a place to live is what I'm seeing here. Um, call on your guides, call on divine assistance, and just try to maintain emotional balance at this time. For those of you where this king of water is an inspiration because they're so emotionally stable and so calm, and they are in touch with their emotions, but in a very tranquil way, the temperance card and tapping into that angelic, divine, balanced energy will help you get into that state of being as they are. And so some of you, you are like, you know, because you maybe some of you are a very fiery person, very fiery, very passionate. You can get fired up about things. Um, and one of the things that you admire so much, so much about this person is that they're very reasonable and very calm and very, um, even like slow moving in some way, but just like it just doesn't feel rushed. Like they just know that things are going to happen in due time and in due course. And and they're very zen about everything. And so tapping into that temperance energy will help you be more like them. Because that's basically what they've been able to do. Is they've been able, they have achieved divine balance they have achieved emotional balance and emotional stability um for some of you uh with the temperance card and refusing alcoholic beverages this is also a time for you to not to drink um because the temperance card showing up and then also this reference here of alcoholics like she's already had one drink she's being offered a second one and just turning it down that is like not to overindulge now is not the time to overindulge so if you have been working on being more balanced and not overindulging in your life and whether it's drinking eating spending money just anything that you were doing excessively and you were starting to get into a phase where you were really like getting yourself in check and getting everything in check and being a lot more um, moderate and using moderation, you definitely, they're, they're telling you to continue to do that because now there is a chance that you could, um, for some of you, fall off the wagon with this offer coming in, especially like this person could be a bad influence on you. Um, and so, you know, you just want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> so that's, that's what they're saying. Um, but yeah. Um, and sometimes people from the past can come back like our old drinking buddies or, or, you know, people that we used to go shopping with all the time, like our friends that we would always go to the mall with and we would end up spending too much money or things like that. Like those types of energies can resurface to see if we have learned the lesson or not. It's like a test, you know? Okay. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. 
All right, moving on. Advice from Pile Three's Guides for Survival. So two of swords, that is making a decision. It could be very indecisive. And right here, I mean, we had all these cards here with the keys being very significant, like the key to your heart, the key to your spark. And with this card here, like this, this person is trying out all of these different keys in order to figure out which one opens their, the lock to their heart. Um, right here, this person is reaching for either a scissor or a key. The scissor will help them out in this situation. And the scissor to me does represent like the sword of truth. The truth will set you free. Um, before, and it's like this person's not going to be able to access this key or do anything with this key until they cut themselves free, right? And they need to tap into the truth, honest truth and knowledge in order to be able to successfully set themselves free from the situation in order to be able to access this key, whatever this key is for you. So again, as I mentioned, if this is a like a father type figure that wants you to live life a certain way, this would be setting yourself free from that situation in order to be able to grasp your key and live life the way you want to live it. Um, for others of you that, you know, find this person very inspirational and you want to do the, you want to, you do want to live life the way they have lived it. Maybe not exactly, but you know, you want to like use the model that they've created in some sort of way and help it apply to your life, but you still have some obstacles when it comes to being grounded with being emotionally stable with not being too like flighty or fired up about things. And so you need to do some self-reflection and that's what this truth is. That's what that sort of truth is, is coming to, to terms with yourself and your motives and your core at your core, at your, at your core being, you know, and this void, this, this reflection on this void energy, it can represent very deep seated patterns that we have learned throughout the course of our lives from our parents and the people around us that are, that they learn from their parents and their parents learn from their grandparents and so on, that we are continuing to try to make relevant for today's world or that we still think is, you know, important for today's world. But sometimes things change and sometimes things are just not healthy. Like the things or the things that motivated us to do certain things were not a good reason to do it. It was out of like fear or lack or safety, survival mode, being in survival mode even. So many things that I think back of, like within my own family and I'm like, you know, if something's bothering me and I start to like evaluate it and think on it and, and I think of, okay, where did that come from? Oh, okay. That's something I always used to hear, you know, from so-and-so when I was little. Okay. Why would they say that? Oh my gosh. It comes from being in survival mode, you know, and having to live and grow up in survival mode. And so cutting free of that is something that is crucial for you at this time because you're not going to be able to access this key if you don't cut yourself loose from all of those things that are holding you back and holding you down <clears throat> okay and again, the darkness and beginning. So the darkness just represents the void, as I was speaking of earlier. Don't be afraid to really do that deep internal self-reflection. Some people are afraid of the feelings that it's going to cause 
Like if you start to reflect on, okay, why do I always treat people, you know, this way? Like I always, you know, I don't trust people for whatever reason. Oh, it's because, you know, this traumatic thing helped happen to me. And as a result, I don't trust people. Just thinking about that, just realizing, oh my gosh, it's going to make me think of, you know, the traumatic things that have happened in my life. Um, and I'm not prepared to deal with those feelings. Don't be afraid of that darkness because shining the light on those things can help release them. It can help, it'll release you from the darkness that ultimately you end up putting yourself in by being afraid of shining a light on all those things. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So basically what I'm getting at is if there's any kind of, you know, traumatic experiences, either you yourself had or like familial family patterns that you you know, other people have experienced and that you've always had to not talk about or keep quiet about or just pretend like they never happened. Um, not shining a light on those things is actually forcing you into darkness because those things are showing up as being connected to you and your life in some kind of way. And so the time has come for your own survival and even for the survival of the next generation as well is what I'm getting with the stuff I was seeing about how this is like a young person who needs to learn how to stand on their own two feet and how to survive in this world. And it's like, are the things, because the world has changed so much, the things that we used to need to be able to survive, we don't necessarily need those things anymore, but we do need other things. We do need other tools. And so you may be trying to, you know, force this person into survival mode based on what you experienced and what you're comfortable with yourself. Whereas understanding where those beliefs came from is going to be very important in order for you to maintain your relationship with this young person if that's your situation um because there is an you know there's a chance here that this person that the relationship between the two of you could be deeply deeply challenged by whatever happens as a result of this um, crisis that, that they may go through, okay? Don't judge them too harshly for it. Um, and just try to understand the world that we are currently living in and actually, you know, what are the viable opportunities out there now? So like if you're trying to help this young person pick a career path, and help them get off to college and things like that, you know, you might think, okay, like back when you were young, everybody was trying to be a stockbroker, <laughs> let's say, right? Um, but nowadays, maybe instead of being a stockbroker or a banker, um, you know, the, they should really look into being like some other type of accountant, like where they can be a controller or like a finance manager or something like that. Instead of, it's like those industries related to the field of finance. And that's just an example. Um, <clears throat> although for somebody it could be relevant, but, but those industries connected to the field of finance, they change and evolve just like everything else in the world changes and evolves and it's like whatever within the field of finance used to be like the career to have at the time has changed it's like you know to be an accountant to be a CPA everybody uses TurboTax nowadays you know for the most part and so it's like do you really expect to force this person to be a CPA in this day and age is that really a viable career option for them, you know, and it's like, 
So it's just taking some time to really evaluate like your perceptions of survival and survival mode and all that is what I'm getting. So this is some deep work. Um, for some people, it will be very deep work. For other people, it's going to be just very liberating and it won't be very difficult for some people because they are so motivated to do it. They are so ready. They have had some sort of a very inspiring person in their lives that has really helped them see the light and they are ready to really look digger, like dig deeper into themselves and new beginnings happening. So Again, this is that energy of the times changing and the new beginnings and new innovations and in technology. And instead of relying on the old ways of doing things and expecting those ways to make, to continue to be viable in this advancing state, like advancing economy is what they're saying. But, um, you know, there's new things happening new things happening, new industries happening, new companies starting, just all kinds of things that are going on in the world right now because of the creativity of other people. In many cases, some people, they have this divine knowledge and divine insight about starting a company or like making an invention, you know, like having an invention. I forgot to say for some of you, this could be like an invention that you're working on and like even patenting an invention, that type of thing. But like, because of the new trends, um, <clears throat> with technology, there's an opportunity for new beginnings in your life, in the life of your children, um, and everybody can benefit from the, from them as well is what I'm getting. Okay. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Okay. A card to represent pile three at the end of this retrograde period. So queen of earth and protection. So you will be very protected during this time, as I mentioned, with the temperance card coming out here and with this little bird just carrying you in, in your little nest, um, you will be protected during this time with whatever chaos may ensue, but it is important to maintain emotional balance and emotional stability. And I also am getting possibly a bit of impartiality especially as it, as it relates to other people. Like if you're trying to help somebody else become independent, you know, and you may need to be a little bit impartial about what it is that they want to do with their lives. Um, also, for those of you who are doing deep, deep internal introspection, you will be protected during this time. As you see this card here, with this person like laying down in the fetal position, um, you know, doing that reflection in the darkness and all that. It's like spirit will carry you through. Spirit will carry you through that work. And you're going to come out a lot more abundant, a lot more grounded. The queen of earth is somebody who is very grounded this is queen of earth energy. So many of you are already in queen of earth energy, but there's some things that are going on to challenge that might be challenging that perception that you have of your abundance. And so if you're able to successfully move through these energies, that's what I'm hearing. If you're able to successfully move through these energies, you will maintain that level of abundance and comfort and even more so is what they're saying at the end of everything you will be even more abundant more fruitful you will be able to tap into your spark you will be able to access the key to your heart to your personal growth to your creativity um the key also represents wisdom the keys of knowledge, 
with the wisdom card coming out here and there and the the hermit card in the traditional tarot deck has keys it's like he holds the keys to spiritual knowledge and so you by doing this reflection and introspection and and connecting with divine angelic guides through prayer um, or meditation will help you access those keys as well and so you will feel even more abundant and uh, realize that you were protected and you were safe the entire time even though it may have seemed like the world was crashing around you with the tower the tower card coming in here and the seven of wands so so i hope that makes sense i hope um because you know as i mentioned this is a general reading and so i get many different like scenarios coming through for people who watch this video and so i hope it's a it's clear <laughs> i hope it's clear so thank you again so much for watching and um please feel free to choose one of the other piles if you feel so inclined have a blessed day